Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Drone Life News. Joining me as always, the editor-in-chief of DroneLife.com, Miss Miriam McNabb. Miriam, how are you doing this, this beautiful Monday? I am excellent. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. And moving right into news, it seems like you've kind of hit on two main themes this week when it comes to, well, drone delivery. And it also seems like the secondary theme is ecosystem building with DJI competitors. But let's get started, Miriam, with our first kind of theme of news in drone delivery. I know there's a lot to go over. So what do you want to hit first? So drone delivery, a lot of news came out this week. We've got medical drone delivery with Matternet and UPS teaming up to deliver COVID vaccines. That's really interesting because they're using temperature controlled payloads to do that. That really expands what drone delivery can do, especially in a medical setting. We've got A to Z drone delivery. That's a drone delivery ecosystem player. They had developed the delivery mechanisms that DroneUp was using on uh, DJI drones for some of DroneUp's earlier uh, testing. Now they've developed their own industry-specific drone delivery aircraft, and it's specifically designed to address some of the community concerns that you hear with drone delivery, primarily that last, you know, 20 feet getting something down. It's a free-fall drone delivery mechanism. They're trying to address noise and safety. So that was kind of an also an interesting development uh, in drone delivery. We also had the flyby guys uh, over in Europe doing pharmacy delivery. That's um, non-prescription delivery, sort of another retail application. You know, as the pandemic continues, those kind of applications have a lot of value in communities. It's contactless delivery. You know, it allows you to receive pharmacy supplies and small retail supplies without having to go into a retail store. And then finally, and this is something that I didn't write about on Drone Life because it's not specific to drones, but there was news that came out about Amazon's plans to open retail stores. And you and I, Paula, have talked about this before. I know you wrote something really interesting about Walmart's drone delivery systems. So, you know, in my view, this is actually significant to Amazon's drone delivery project. As we've discussed before, one of the problems that Amazon has faced is bringing their supply closer to their customer. You know, how are they going to change that distribution network to bring their supply close enough to their customer to make drone delivery work. And if they are planning on opening retail stores, uh, which may compete with Walmart or other retail giants, that could be a way to do it. So I think that that could actually make Amazon's drone delivery program more realistic. Now, you had some great insight on Walmart's drone delivery uh, system. So talk about that. Well, you know, it's really interesting, as you had mentioned, the retail wars kind of heating up, right, between Amazon and Walmart as it really comes down to convenience. You know, delivery times are crucial, and it seems like as Amazon Prime has kind of promised two-day delivery on most items that I think are sub five pounds, uh, it seems like more and more of these items really don't fall under Amazon Prime in the ability to get shipments fast, which is why it's so interesting that Walmart has released, as of last week, their Go Local program, which kind of opens up this delivery as a service to really help smaller retailers, local retailers, take advantage of Walmart's distribution system. Because as Walmart says, you know, they can reach 70% of all of the United States population within two hours of a given Walmart store. I mean, that's pretty significant. 
And as we've talked before, if Walmart can utilize their decentralized drone program, which was through a partnership of Drone Up, it seems like they can really take that platform and service more local retailers, more small businesses. And if they can speed up delivery for even small local retailers, it seems like that Walmart Plus program might have a lot more well, wait to it, as I know a lot of people haven't really been too privy to the Walmart Plus program, myself included. So I would say, Miriam, it really seems like the retail wars are heating up, especially as it wasn't it just a few months ago that we learned that Amazon's Prime Air program had literally failed to launch. Absolutely. But I think, you know, especially as the pandemic continues, delivery is kind of a a sine qua non, right? I mean, you've got to have it because people are just um, really hesitant. They've gotten out of the habit of going into brick and mortar stores, uh, you know, whenever the mood strikes. So I think that you're absolutely right. I think drone delivery is really going to provide these companies with an edge. Now, here's something for us to think about is when you're talking about this decentralized Walmart program that can serve other small retailers, doesn't that sort of hit exactly where Google Wing is? Ah, that's actually a very interesting point. I thought you were going to bring up the fact that Amazon's retail stores could provide a uh, platform to launch from for more drone delivery. But that's an extremely important point. And I mean, especially with all these new delivery drones that are kind of coming out, you know, we know that Google Wing, I believe, got their airworthiness certificate, if I if I'm correct on that. They did, yes. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal, Miriam. I mean, I think uh, drone delivery seems like it's here before the regulations are here. Absolutely. So we still don't have like beyond visual line of sight. And you know, I remember several years ago uh, having the opportunity to to speak with somebody who had been present at the very first drone delivery trial on Virginia Tech's campus. Uh, you know, with Virginia Tech has an agreement with the UAS test site. And they were delivering the Chipotle burritos and she described it and said, you know, here we were on one side of the parking lot while they ask you, you know, someone has to run over, ask you what kind of burrito you want. Then they run back across the parking lot and they sort of launch the drone, deliver you the burrito. You can see them right over there, you know, and then the then the person comes back over with their with their uh, machine to charge you, charge your credit card for the burrito that you just ordered. And, you know, while it was really interesting because it was one of the first drone delivery examples, it was also sort of a funny reminder of the limitations of drone delivery right now, which is if you still have to fly beyond, you can't fly beyond visual line of sight, you're still kind of stuck delivering to the other end of the parking lot, which is um, has some value, <laughs> but you really need those uh, beyond visual line of sight permissions to um, appear. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of makes me wonder, you know, because drone delivery with very specific circumstances can happen under Part 107. But I feel like maybe the best example of that would be if someone like Chick-fil-A, instead of running orders out to your car, just has a drone pop up, you know, grab your food and have little arms that, you know, comes to your car window and says, here you go kind of thing. Um, Absolutely. in and out Burger or wherever those sonic drive throughs are. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that, Absolutely. Could, that could really be uh, game changing for sure. But in this week's uh, really other main theme of news... It seems like the ecosystem in DJI competitors continues really to advance as Autarian is really making waves with their flight controllers by providing numerous, you know, uh, platforms for various companies to kind of attach their accessories or their services or their autonomy to any Autarian kind of cube flight controller. And Miriam, I know you have two pieces of news on this this week as Autarian and these drones offer more well flexibility for their aircraft. Well, you know, I don't I don't know specifically about the flight controller, you know, you've talked about that, but I have noticed that in the news this last week, I started seeing more releases come from companies that are not drone 
manufacturers, you know, offering products and services for specific drone models. And so Fox Fury, which is a lighting company, you know, they are a very well respected lighting company, US based, and they they do all kinds of lighting solutions for public safety and events and all kinds of things. But they were early to the drone industry providing lighting specifically for drones. You know, now they're offering a complete sort of drone package for the Autel Evo 2 to make that into a more uh, useful aircraft for search and rescue specifically. So they have this whole package available. You know, they've clearly partnered with Autel to develop this, but it really adds functionality to the Autel drone. So that was an interesting development. You know, I think, of course, that's happened before. Of course, with DJI, there are, you know, different chargers that work with DJI drones. There are, you know, landing platforms, gimbals, and so forth. However, I think that what I'm seeing now is really much more sophisticated technology designed to increase the capabilities of a manufacturer's aircraft. It's an interesting thing. It's probably great for the industry because it allows drone manufacturers to sort of focus on their core competencies and allow, you know, kind of other players in the ecosystem to add their core competencies to the aircraft. Now, the other space that we're seeing sort of huge, huge growth in is software. And uh, it's really hard to get your arms around because if you look up drone software companies, you'll find millions of them. It seems like, you know, sort of doing a huge variety of things. But these software packages and solutions that are designed specifically for use cases. And the example um, that I wrote about this last week was a Korean company, drone software company called Nerf Lab, working on software designed specifically for wind turbine inspections, right? So they've got inspection of wind turbines down to 15 minutes, you know, and they have these very sophisticated software packages really designed to address very specific use cases. And I think that that's an an interesting development and great for the industry because as these other players can focus on very specific use cases, the drone manufacturers can just focus on making their drones, you know, sort of robust, safe, longer endurance, um, whatever they need to without trying to chase every single specific use case. Yeah, yeah. And I think I should have been more clear that uh, Autarian and Autel are obviously separate companies, but more of a macro push, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, this ecosystem as a whole. Absolutely. So I'm I'm thinking that that is a great um, boost for the industry. I think we'll see a lot of great new use cases come out of that. And I think that it's sort of a more effective way of scaling and growing fast than developing unique aircraft for each specific use case. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Miriam. Well, lots of news this week, but I know you're expecting even more news next week. Is that right? Absolutely. So next week, really excited to be at Commercial UAV Expo in Las Vegas. Uh, Hope to see everybody there. As we discussed, you know, going to AUVSI Exponential in Georgia was really great. Um, Despite the pandemic, so good to be uh, with people again and uh, seeing sort of new technology and new offerings really on the floor. So I'm looking forward to Commercial UAV Expo next week and I'll let you know what I find. Awesome, Miriam. Well, thank you so much for those updates and definitely looking forward 
to the updates next week. So thank you again, Miriam. Uh, that is going to do it for us today, everyone. Very short episode, as there's not too much really in the news this week. But uh, one last thing, we will have a little bonus article here as more leaks for the Mavic 3 have just been launched. And uh, you may not have seen it as a Portuguese-based YouTuber was showcasing uh, those images and models of that new aircraft. Very exciting. Uh, but other rumors say we're not supposed to get it till next year. So I guess time will tell. But thank you, everyone. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe as we greatly appreciate your support. That's going to do it for us this week for another edition of Drone Life News.